Hey everyone, not too long ago a commenter asked, can you beat Dark Souls with no equipment and items only? Which then got me thinking, how can I spice it up a bit? Which then brought me to the question, can I beat Dark Souls with no leveling, no equipment and items only? With that said, let's get into the rules for this run. Rule number one, items only. That includes fire bombs, black fire bombs, throwing knives, poison throwing knives, and dung pies. Rule number two, no equipment. That means no armor or rings. Rule number three, no leveling. Rule number four, no summons or glitches. And lastly, beat the game. I will try to beat as many bosses as I can, but my main focus is just to beat the game. With that said, let's get this run started. I start off by naming my character Dr. Stone because I'll be having to use a lot of brain power for this one. For the class, I went with the Thief due to the fact that you get Master Key with it and it allows me to pick the Black Fire Bombs for my gift. And with that, it's time to start the run. I wake up in my cell, grab the key, and start stripping, as all players normally do. Once fully naked, I make my great escape. With having Black Fire Bombs already, we can take on the first boss, the Asylum Demon. There is a speedrunner strat where you can stand in one place and just throw bombs at him, killing him in a matter of seconds. I did not trust myself to pull this off, so I just kept my distance, and within 5 throws, he goes down, earning me my first Dark Souls pass. With the Asylum Demon burnt to a crisp, I hitch a ride from a little birdie and ride off into the sunset to never be seen again. Okay, that's a lie, but god, I really wish it was true. I am dropped off at Firelink Shrine, where I pick up some more fire bombs, some souls, and lastly, some homeward bones. From here, I make my way to New Londo Ruins to get a Firekeeper's Soul. I then upgrade my flask to plus one and start making my way to Undead Burn. Just to demonstrate how strong firebombs are early on in the game, they are easily able to kill the hollows in this area in one hit. Unfortunately though, this destructive power won't last long. At Undead Berg, I find the Undead Merchant and stock up on more firebombs. Firebombs are extremely cheap. They only cost 50 souls and they deal 180 base damage a very underrated item for early game. With that, I buy 89 of them and take my leave. Some of you veteran Souls players might be thinking, I got the black fire bombs in the residential area. Huh, how cute of you. You actually think I know what I'm doing, you silly little gooses. With that blunder, I parkour my way to the first optional boss, the Taurus Demon. I was a bit worried about this boss at first. I knew he could do some major damage to me since I'm only level five, but soon found out I was just worrying for nothing. I simply just walk towards him, bait out his attack, walk backwards, and throw some bombs at him. The only attack that had me worried was his jumping pound attack that he uses if you're too far away from him, but this is easily mitigated by staying within a medium distance of him. After 10 firebombs, the beast goes down, earning me nothing. Yay! After beating the Taurus demon, I made a new friend who will never betray me. Isn't that right, Solaire? Before heading to Undead Parish, I restock up on firebombs. I then use the Master Key shortcut for Dark Root Basin to skip all this bullshit. Once at Undead Parish, I grab a Firekeeper Soul to upgrade my flask to plus two and save my good old pal Lotric, who I immediately throw a bomb at his face because he's a dick. We battle it out for a while, but of course, I'm the main character in this story, so he goes down. Don't feel bad for him, he was going to kill the Firekeeper if I left him alive. With Lotric rightfully dead, time to take on the Bell Gargoyles. The Bell Gargoyles fight went way better than I expected. I normally die here a lot, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you would know this as well. But maybe all those deaths are finally starting to pay off. I just kept my distance throughout the first phase to easily get the first Gargoyle down to half health. Once both were out, it of course got a bit tricky. Even to the point I almost died due to the Gargoyle giving me a prostate exam but I wouldn't let a little old finger up the butt stop me. I stayed patient, waiting for one of them to do their fire breath attack, for me to lob a bomb straight into their face, and after a total of 13 bombs, the bell gargoyles went down, earning me my second bet. After showing the bell gargoyles who has the superior firepower, I made my way to the lower burg to the female merchant. The female merchant sells poison throwing knives for 100 souls and dung pies for 200 souls. I'll be stocking up on as many of these as I can for the up and coming boss fights. After stocking up on knives and shit, it's time to take on the Capra Demon. Well, that didn't take long. Besides that small hiccup, the Capra Demon is a pretty big pushover. That's a first. I had no clue he could stay up here. 
After that second hiccup, it was smooth sailing. I decided for this fight to mainly use the poison throwing knives and fire bombs. I used the bombs to take out the dogs and proceed to throw poison daggers at the Capra Demon. Poison throwing knives have the chance to poison enemies after a certain amount of hits. It all depends on the enemy's resistance on how many hits it will take, but the Capra Demon it only took 5 knives to the face to poison him. Poison throwing knives do 4 HP of damage per second for 3 minutes. After poisoning the demon, I proceed to throw 8 bombs at his ugly face until he was no longer ugly, and with that, I earn the depths key. I make my way down the depths and save Laurentius. Don't tell Griggs. After leading Griggs to rot, it's time to take on the Gaping Dragon. For the Gaping Dragon, I'm not even shocked at this point. My original plan for this fight is to toxic the boss and just use fire bombs to finish him off. You might be thinking, why not poison and toxic for the double tick damage? I would love to, but not all bosses can be poison or toxic. Here are two lists showing which bosses are immune to poison and which ones are immune to toxic. For this fight, I only had 30 dung pies to use and I used all of them to not even toxic the boss. No clue how many it takes to toxic the gaping dragon, but it must be more than 30. So I bail on that idea and go straight for firebombs and throwing knives, but mostly firebombs. I did find out during this fight that my bombs can go straight through the boss completely missing. What the fuck from soft? I know Dark Souls 1 has bad hitboxes, but my god, I did not think it was this bad. But even with that slight nuisance, it wasn't too hard to take him down. I just let him chase me around while I threw bombs and knives at him, and after 38 fire bombs and 5 throwing knives, the gaping dragon goes down. Once again, I get nothing from doing this. Why am I fighting the optional bosses again? With the Gaping Dragon defeated and me contemplating my life choices, I revisit my Dung Pie dealer to restock up on some shit. With fresh shit in hand, I make my way down to Blight Town to take on Chaos Witch Quaylag. The plan for Quaylag is to toxic her and just spam throwing knives. Dung Pies are pretty much the same as poison throwing knives, but instead they do 7 HP of damage per second for 600 seconds, giving a total damage of 4,200. Unfortunately though, it did take some time for me to figure her out, but lucky for me, it didn't take too long. It's actually very straightforward how to deal with her. Anytime her spider spits up lava, just throw some shit at her, and when her spider is projectile vomiting, you can get multiple shits in. Every coprophilia's dream. After dousing Quaylag with 41 dung pie, she is finally toxic. From here, I just repeat the same pattern, but using throwing knives instead. Normal throwing knives are okay, they don't do that much damage, but they are like arrows so you can get critical hits when hitting an enemy in the head. After watching Quaylag smell like shit for 10 minutes and throwing 55 knives, she goes down, earning me my third Dark Souls bat. After fulfilling Quaylag's dream of having someone shit all over her, I decided to pay Moonlight Butterfly a visit. Moonlight Butterfly wasn't hard, just annoying. I used a mix of throwing knives and fire bombs to try and hit her. Unfortunately, most of them would end up missing. I did find out that she has a solar beam attack though. Out of all 8 playthroughs I have done so far, I've never seen this attack once, and I'll be honest, it scared the living shit out of me. Either way, Moonlight Butterfly doesn't put up that much of a fight. After 14 throwing knives and 13 bombs, she easily goes down for shits and giggles. After blowing up a butterfly, I visit Andre and buy the crest of Artorius. From here, I head back to Darkroot Gardens to unlock the sealed door and begin grinding. I'll be grinding Thing 1, Thing 2, and Thing 3. In this area, you can trick the AI to just run off the map and earn an easy 6,000 souls. I do this in preparation for buying Black Fire Bombs at Sin's Fortress. Black Fire Bombs cost 500 souls, which gives me PTSD from my bow run. PTSD aside, I'll need 49,500 souls to buy 99 bombs. With the grinding finish, I make my way through Sin's Fortress to buy Black Fire Bombs from the Crest Fallen Merchant. I buy the bombs, and with that, it's time to take on the Iron Golem. Oh dear god, it only does 36 damage. So, this fight took a hot minute. Nine minutes to be exact. Really, all you do is run back and forth throwing bombs at him until he dies. Nothing really special for this fight. I did find it very impressive how badly I missed though, and I missed a lot. After a whopping 74 black fire bombs and 8 fire bombs, he goes down, earning me my 4th bat. With the Iron Golem defeated, I think it's time we pay Pinwheel a visit. Pinwheel was actually a bit scary, if you can actually believe that. I came close at the very beginning to actually dying to him, but fortunate for me, he's still a pushover. Oh dear god, why are there so many? Square, square, roll, roll, motherfucker, roll! 
Oh, okay, never in my life would I have thought Pinwheel's boss fight would give me a heart attack. But luckily I was able to get 9 black firebombs off to finish him, earning me the right of kindling. After learning to respect Pinwheel as a boss fight, I make my way to Anor Londo. I rush to the castle to find a friend. Hey Solaire, my best friend in the world that would never let anything bad happen to me. Oh, oh fuck me, fuck, fuck Solaire, help! Damn it, man, do something! You're just sitting there! Do something, motherfucker! He just sat there and watched me die! <laughs> I thought we were friends, damn it! After being betrayed by my best friend and heartbroken, time to take on Ornstein and Smo. Ornstein and Smo were a bit rough, just a bit. My plan for this fight was to poison Ornstein and just throw bombs at him until he dies, and after that, proceed to toxic Smo and throw bombs at him. It only took a few tries, but finally on my fourth go, I was able to pull off killing Ornstein. But sadly, this does not have a happy ending. Once I made it to the second phase, I completely forgot about toxing Smo and was just painfully missing bomb throws. It looked good at first until I got overly confident and got killed by him in one shot. I was not a happy camper, to say the least. I restocked back up and went back to it. Lady Luck must have been on my side because I was able to poison Ornstein again with four consecutive throws and then Lady Luck told me to go fuck myself because Ornstein stopped being poisoned. I tried to poison him again with another 8 knives but had no luck so I switched to throwing bombs to finish him off. Took a total of 11 poison throwing knives and 9 black fire bombs to kill Ornstein. With Ornstein out the way, that just left Daddy Smo. Smo has a very low resistance to toxic and only took 6 hits to get him to be stinky. I also made sure to have some blooming purple moss clumps on me to remove the toxin from myself. From here, I tried to poison him as well to get double tick damage but to be honest, I had no clue if he actually got poison or not. So I just threw as many knives at him as I could and then proceeded to chunk fire bombs at him until he just couldn't take it anymore. It took a total of 6 dun pies, 5 poison throwing knives, and 9 black fire bombs to take him down. Earning me my 5th Dark Souls. With that 15 minute fight over with, I make my way to Guinevere's chambers to join her cult of giant titty lovers. Satisfaction at its finest. After being hypnotized by giant titties, I decided to take a nice little nap in this bird's nest right here. Wait, what's going on? Oh, 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 I heart titties! After being rudely awakened, I make my way through the undead asylum to take on the stray demon. The stray demon was a bit tricky at first, but I was able to find a very useful pattern to beat him. Interestingly enough, if you just run circles around him, you can dodge all of his attacks. The only thing you need to do when he does his AoE attack is roll 2 to 3 times. 3 is the safest option, but depending on how far away the AoE is, you only need to do 2. So all I did was toxic dash poison him and run circles around him throwing bombs until he died. Why? Why does this always happen to me? I repeat this strategy once more using 6 Dunpai, 17 poison throwing knives, and 17 black fire bombs to finally take out the stray demon earning me nothing but knowledge. With the stray demon defeated, I head back to my cell and pick up the peculiar doll, and with that, I make my way to the painted world of Ariamas. Ariamas. It's Ariamas. Damn it. Here, I use a speedrunner skip where you can bypass the undead dragon without fighting it. You can come to the side right here, slowly walk onto the ledge, immediately turn around to land on an invisible ledge, and roll off. With that, you can skip the undead dragon. Sadly, it's time to take on Priscilla. Don't be mad at me, Priscilla. The viewers want this for some reason. Priscilla was easier than Pinwheel, funny enough. Once I unveiled her, she wasn't really a threat and sadly didn't really try and fight back, which made the fight even more depressing. Interesting. Usually I'm the one blowing out white stuff, but I guess it's Priscilla's turn. Unfortunately, our fun had to come to an end. After 10 poison throwing knives and 15 black fire bombs, she goes down, earning me nothing but guilt. With Priscilla defeated, I make my way to the Duke Archives to immediately be killed by Seath. Don't you fucking dare, there's no fucking god. After being cursed by god himself, I then proceed to blow up the prison guard and make my escape. Just gonna open this chest right here, and it's fine. I'll just try again. Oh, I've been shanked. Makes sense, I'm in prison after all. Finally, you can kill me now. Fast traveling at its finest. I finally escape to take on Seath the Scales. Seath wasn't horrible, well, besides that, that indeed was horrible. Really, all you have to do for him is just walk in a circle, throwing bombs, and making sure you don't stand in one place for too long. 
unless you want this to happen to you. I would have poisoned Dash Toxic Seath to speed up the fight, but he's immune to both of them, sadly. It only took 34 Black Fire Bombs to take him down and earn me my 6 Dark Souls back. After beating Seath, I felt like I was missing something. Oh yeah, Gwendolyn. I don't know if I've stated this before, but I really hate Gwendolyn's boss fight. I just find it extremely lazy boss design, plus it's just plain boring. I'd much rather fight Pinwheel again, and that's saying something. You literally just chase him down a hallway, throwing bombs at him. The worst part is you actually have to chase him for a good while to actually kill him. I ended up having to do this fight 12 times until I was finally able to kill the little shit. Took 13 black fire bombs to do the job, and I'm happy I'll never have to do this again. With Mr. I Wish My Dad Loved Me, no more, I make my way to the Demon Ruins. From here, I proceed to throw knives at Ceaseless Discharge. No more jerky jerky for the big jerky. With Ceaseless left arm out of commission, it's time to take on the Fire Sage. The Fire Sage is the same fight as the Stray Demon, but he can jump away from you this time. Even with that, I still ended up suffering, as we all do, to the Fire Sage's ruthless opener. After finally surviving, I was able to circle him while throwing 4 shits, 6 poison knives, and 28 fire bombs to take him down, earning me nothing once more. With the fire sage no more, that leaves us the centipede demon. I'm just going to get this out the way, I did not win this fight. I tried for a bit, but it was really tough dealing with him in close quarters. Not only can he kill me in one hit, he is immune to fire damage so no fire bombs, and if I touch the lava in the area, I instantly die. On my last go, I was able to poison him and get some knife throws in to get his health down, but it wasn't even close to halfway. Worst part was my poison proc ran out and I had no more poison throwing knives on me. So after being pushed into the lava and dying, I decided it wasn't worth the headache. Normally I would keep trying, but I knew what waited before me and didn't want to deal with him anymore. After my failure, I decided to blow up some rats, collect some humanity, and offer it all up to Quelag's little sister to get access to the bed of Chaos Shortcut. Before taking the shortcut, I pick up the binoculars from Firelink Shrine. I'll be needing it for the Bed of Chaos. I then proceed to open the shortcut to take on the Bed of Chaos. Since I'm using firebombs, I get to do the firebomb cheese for this fight. To do the firebomb cheese, you just start from the base and walk forward three squares. From here, you would normally use a bow to aim the shot, but I have to use my binoculars since I can't use a bow. You then aim at this branch right here, and with that, lob a firebomb to take out the first barrier. Immediately afterwards, turn to your right and look up a bit and throw another bomb to destroy the second barrier. Unfortunately, I think I was a bit too slow at it because I ended up getting killed right after destroying the second barrier. But it's no worries. I come right back, hop across to throw a knife at the little demonic shit, and with that, I earn my 7th Dark Souls back. With Satan's spawn defeated, I made my way through the Tomb of Giants to take on Gravelord Nito. Nito's... of course I died within two seconds. Nito's fight was utter hell. Since his skeletons don't stay dead longer than five seconds, you don't really get any breathing room, and with me having no armor, I get stunlocked to oblivion. For a good while, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be able to win this fight. But every now and then, I would get a run where the RNG lined up for me to get close to beating him. The real key was for Nito to kill his own skeletons while I killed him. Lucky for me, after 138 deaths, RNG Jesus on my side, and 39 black fire bombs, I earned my 8th Dark Souls badge and will never have to do this again, thank god. With Nito defeated, I make my way through Darkroot Gardens to take on Sif. Sif was surprisingly hard, due to not having armor, I'm very weak to slashing damage and pretty much can die from any of her attacks. After countless deaths, I finally figured out how to deal with her. All I had to do was run away while throwing 11 shits and 16 bombs to bring her down, earning me the Ring of Artorias. With Sif's blood on my hands, I must pay for my crimes and take on the Four Kings. And it's 100% a punishment. The Four Kings fight made Nido look like child's play. Hell, it made Duo Artorias look like child's play. I died over 200 times. 221 times to be exact. Due to the four kings being a DPS check and the fact that the black fire bombs just don't do enough damage, all four kings will be out and about, and it's just not fun. I got pretty good at dodging, but it only takes one hiccup for me to die, and I hiccuped a lot. Nearing my 200th try, I was close to winning, but luck was not on my side. I ended up dying to a simple mistake. To be honest, I wasn't even that mad. I was just stunned at how a simple mistake can destroy an entire run. It took me a minute before I tried again, but I didn't even get close, and I finally decided I couldn't do it anymore. 
I just couldn't bear the thought of having to do another 200 tries to see if I could get lucky. And with that, the four kings defeated me. On the bright side, I did beat the Sanctuary Guardian. Only took 14 poison throwing knives, 15 dung pies, and 14 black fire bombs to do the job. Now you might be wondering about Artorius. Well, I gave it the good old college try, and when I saw that crisp 32 damage, I was not about it. Artorius has 3,750 HP, and it would take 99 black fire bombs and 31 fire bombs to kill Artorius. I did come across Lobos Jr's video of him doing it with armor and levels, and it took him over an hour to beat it. I don't think I had that type of mental fortitude to take the chance of being an hour into a fight to lose to a single hit. So you win this one, Artorius. Even though I didn't beat the four kings, I wanted to see if I could beat Gwen, so I broke one of my rules and glitched myself into the kiln of the first flame. I did try to give Gwen a few good goes to see if I could do it without cheesing him, but after an hour I said fuck it. To cheese Gwen, you just need to run off to the right and jump up this ledge. Now, he can still hit you from here, but the key is to get him up here with you. Let's just say it took a hot minute until I was able to pull it off. But once he's up here, you can run and jump to your left to fling off into safety. From here, just stand in this one spot and bomb away. After 42 black fire bombs to the face, Gwen goes down, earning me my final victory. So, can I beat Dark Souls with no leveling, no armor, and items only? No. No, I cannot. But, I'm positive someone could do it, or maybe one day I'll try again. Who knows. Either way, I had fun, and that's all that really matters. With that said, I would like to say thanks to my supporters. Scott T, you're the man. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the link below, or click that join button. As usual, thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate it. Until next time, take care.